you need for a rainforest. You need a lot of rain, <laughs> the clue is there, but you need clean air as well to allow these lichens and bryophytes to have continued in Argyll and on the west coast of Scotland. It's been about clean air. The prevailing comes in from the southwest. There's no industry out there. But as you come beyond Loch Fine, the lichen populations get far better because you're further away from the industrial legacy of Glasgow. So the west coast of Scotland has an equable climate. An equable climate is one that is neither too hot nor too cold. The Gulf Stream means that winters around here are, relatively speaking, mild in comparison to further east. The combination between water and woodland, particularly in mid Argyle, we have this great the fjord-like sea locks coming in, penetrating right into the land. Quite often, some of our best rainforest remnants are on these lock sites as well. But this otherworldly place, essentially, if you walk into an English woodland or a, a woodland on the east coast of Scotland, you see far more bark. There are lots of lichen species in this temperate rainforest which are pretty much confined to ancient woodland and use those as indices of how old that bit of woodland is and how it's been managed in the past. In simple terms, there's crustose lichens. They're often like a very thin crust. Looks almost like the bark has been painted on a tree or the rock's got splashes of colour. They're thin crustose. You also get thick crustose. In trees, you might get a big porridgey splat on the, on the bark. There's also leafy ones, folios lichens. The tree lungwort would be your, your typical one in these old growth woods. The typical one most people would be familiar with would be the dog lichens you get in the lawn. They can produce fruiting bodies, which produce spores. A lichen is a, is a part organisation between a fungus and an algae. The spore has then got to meet the right algae in the right conditions to be able to form a new lichen. Some of them can also reproduce vegetatively and that means they produce little packages with the fungal partner and the algal partner in that little packet. Once it lands somewhere, as long as the habitat's right, then it can carry on and grow to form a new lichen. The fungal spores, they can obviously travel long distances through air current, whereas the vegetative propagules are generally much larger and heavier. They don't tend to disperse quite so readily. There's different fruit and bodies. There's ones which are like little jam tarts with a flat surface to the top. The fungal spores, they're produced within this surface in little sacs and then the spores are ejected directly from the surface. There's another type, a rounded fruiting body. It's got a little hole in the top. There, the fungal spores are still produced in these little sacs, but they're ejected through the, the pore at the top. Inappropriate grazing levels. It's not always overgrazing, particularly with lichens and bryophytes. There are sensitivities around reducing the grazing too much. And that's one of the really special features of this rainforest is the non-flowering plants, the lichens, bryophytes, mosses, which carpet the trees and the ground in around these woodlands. Some of them are internationally scarce. It means that getting the grazing right, because if you have too much grazing, you will eat out the woodland. If you don't have enough grazing, there is a danger that all the regrowth that happens when you remove the grazing pressure will outcompete some of the bryophytes on the rock. They will get swamped by too much growth. It's really important to get the right level of grazing. And we know that if you look at a natural system in a woodland, that there will be a level of grazing. Removing all the grazing is almost certainly as unnatural as having too much grazing. There are woodland species which live within certain light levels, essentially. Bracken is the big one you notice in Argyle. Bracken is a woodland species, and if it's under a woodland canopy, it never reaches the dense six-foot-high stands that you see on open hillsides because it doesn't get enough light. Woodland is about the management of light, and woodland canopy controls the amount of light that reaches the ground, which is why you get the spring flowers, which form just before the canopy closes, taking advantage of the fact that the leaves on the trees aren't completely formed yet. We are, as a society, very obsessed with planting trees as the answer. And you know, it's a very simple ecological fix. Once you've taken your bottle to the bottle bank, if you then go out and plant a tree, then you've 
done what's required to save the world. But actually, of course, woodlands have been sorting themselves out without people planting them millennia. If you get the grazing level right, you will get young trees growing in a woodland without having to plant them. The woodland are quite good at looking after themselves if the grazing level is right. In Scotland, we've had an increasing number of deer. The number of deer in my lifetime has increased from about a quarter of a million to a million. Deer are herbivores, they're very happy to eat young trees. On the farm side of things, Scotland still has a lot of sheep. They're also very good at eating young trees. The result of which is you end up with woodlands without any young trees in them. And that's equally as bad as a community with no young people in it. I've had a very long interest in community woodlands and involving people in woodland management. If you look at the rainforest belt in the west of Scotland, not only is it the home to our rainforest, but one of the other features of this part of the world is that it's one of the most sparsely populated parts of Scotland. It's an area where population is still declining. We're looking to see wide-scale restoration of the rainforest, but it's really clear that you can't restore the rainforest without people because the things that need sorted out in the rainforest are largely to do with invasive species, particularly rhododendron, which is spreading through the rainforest. It's a time-consuming and labour-consuming thing to remove rhododendron. You need a lot of people to be living in this part of the world restoring the rainforest and we can't do one without the other we need to restore the community as much as we need to restore the habitat engaging people is as time consuming and as important as the restoration we make a mistake whenever we try to separate people out from the environment because human beings are an integral part of the environment there has been a very long term intimate relationship between people in Britain, particularly on the West Coast, 